What's up vlog? Today I want to talk to you guys about buying your very first boat. I know that's very very exciting because I've been there and I'm going to try to give you guys a little bit of advice to hopefully help you pick the very best boat for you and your situation. So buying your very first boat, man, I know that's super exciting. I, could, I remember being there. I remember buying my first bass boat and that's super, super, super exciting. So for you guys out there looking to buy a boat, you're thinking about buying a boat, uh, for you parents out there, I know there's a lot of new guys getting into the sport now and you're wondering what boat should I buy? What size, what horsepower? Should I get fiberglass? Should I get aluminum? I want to talk to you guys a little about that, a little bit about it, give you my spin on it, um, kind of tell you some of my background, how I got started, and maybe that'll help you make the final decision in what boat you buy. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way right off the bat. I know where this is going to go in the comments section, and I'm going to go ahead and get it addressed before we even start talking about bass boats. Um, bass fishing is expensive, okay? That's never going to change. It doesn't matter how much you grumble, complain about it, how much you come in on this video or somebody else's video about the price of boats and the price of fishing is always going to be just out of reach for a lot of people. But that doesn't mean you can't participate in bass fishing. And quite honestly, I know you can because I come from a very normal middle class family. I didn't grow up rich. It didn't go up poor. Um, bass fishing is something that is accessible to everybody. Doesn't matter where you come from, at what level you complain, what level you compete in the sport in, everybody can do it if you're willing to put in the work and the sacrifice. So, I know where this is going to go. Well, everybody can't afford a $70,000 boat. Everybody can't afford a 50. Everybody can't afford a 30. Well, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely 100% right. And that's why there's a ton of different options out there for you guys to buy. All the way from less than $1,000 to probably over $100,000 is what you can spend in a boat. And if you can't spend 50, 60, 70, I promise you there is a boat and there's a rig out there that fits your price range that will let you get out on the water. So I think it's super important for you guys. I know there's a lot of high school anglers getting into the sport of bass fishing now. And I know that a lot of guys, a lot of parents are not exposed to the boating world like I was. I was fortunate to grow up. My dad was a tournament fisherman, so I kind of piggybacked off a lot of his experience when it came time for me to get a boat. But I know there's a lot of confusion. Where do you buy? Do you buy aluminum? Do you buy fiberglass? How big? How much horsepower? Um, and just to go into that, I think it's always a great idea to start small. A lot of the kids that are out there now, I know a lot of guys are going into uh, the high school fishing, the competitive aspect of, of fishing. And I think it's a good idea for everybody, every kid, to probably have his own boat. I think that's a good idea. I'll tell you why. Um, I, as I mentioned, I grew up around the aspect of tournament fishing, and um, but you know, as a teenager, as a as a uh, as a kid, it was always in the back on the back deck of someone's boat. My dad's boat, one of my dad's friends or a friend's boat. I grew up fishing in the back of the boat. And I got a lot of experience that way, and that's a great way to be introduced to fishing. I think it's a great idea for teenagers, um, you know, 11, 12, 13, all the way up to 20, 25 years old, however you want to specify a kid to be. I think it's a great idea for them to have their own boat. Let me tell you why I think it's a good idea. I got my first boat when I was probably 15 or 16 years old is when I got my own personal first boat. It was a 12 foot low 1236. I did not have a trailer. I hauled it around in the back of my boat, in the back of my truck, pickup truck. And um, all I had was the boat and the trolling motor for the first year. That's all, that's all I had. I didn't have just the boat and the trolling motor, no trailer. I had a boat, trolling motor, and a battery. And I worked through the summer and I finally earned enough money to get an engine. And that following season after I bought my boat, I was able to get a 7.5 Mercury. 
and my dad even helped me. I think he pitched in a couple hundred bucks. I saved, you know, a little over half of it and, and got a seven and a half Mercury. And it used to take me like 30 minutes, 45 minutes to assemble this thing in the ramp because I didn't have a trailer. I put it all inside the boat and assembled all the gas and batteries and trolling motor and tackle and all that gear. I slid it out the back of my truck and assembled it on the ramp. So uh, that's how I started. But I can tell you, having that boat was the best thing that ever happened to me because having that boat, I learned how to put together a day of fishing on the waters. Once I got that aluminum boat and I started hauling that thing around in the back of my truck, the sense of pride that I have, that I had when I went out on my own, figured out an area, a pattern, a way to catch fish all by myself. The sense of self-confidence, self-esteem and pride that I got out of that is irreplaceable. And I think that is the best way to strengthen new anglers, um, kids in high school fishing, so forth. For them to go out on their own, in their own boat, and start to understand and develop some sense of angling skills is the best thing that you could do for your child um, personally. I think that's, that's the best thing you should do. But with that being said, um, owning a boat is a huge responsibility. And that's some of the things we're going to talk about when you're speaking of buying your first boat. Owning a boat is a huge responsibility, especially for a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old, a teenager, or even a 20 year old, depending on how mature they are. That's a huge responsibility. A boat is a very, very dangerous piece of equipment. I would argue that a boat is even more dangerous than owning a car. When it comes to buying a boat, <clears throat> some things you need to think about from my perspective. Number one, of course, just cost. You know, just what can you afford? What can you afford to buy and still be able to go fishing the way you want to go fishing? So for you, if that's fishing BFLs, how much can you spend in a boat and still be able to go fish your BFLs? So if you can't afford a brand new Falcon and be able to fish every tournament of your given division of AVAs or BFLs or club tournaments it's probably not going to be the right choice for you you need to step it down because the whole purpose of having a boat is to be able to go out and go fishing right so if you can't afford the boat and the fish you're probably overspending in the boat so think about that second thing you want to think about is if this is your first boat what kind of tow vehicle do you have um think about that if you have a mid-size SUV or um, you know maybe you have a car maybe you have a minivan who knows what he has think about your tow vehicle that's why I suggest aluminum boats a lot of times a nice 15 16 foot boat is a great starter boat for you guys you can pull it with just about any vehicle I can pull this this little boat right here I can pull it with uh, a mid-size SUV, if I just had a car, I could pull it with a car. I think the thing weighs like 11 to 1,200 pounds all together. Um, and I fish out of this boat all the time. So here's another thing that you got to think about when you're buying your boat. Do you have somewhere to store it? Do you have a garage? If you don't have a garage and you may have to keep your boat outside, aluminum boat. It doesn't fade. Fiberglass is going to be fade. It takes a little extra care. You got to have somewhere to store your boat if you're going to look at getting a fiberglass boat. So think about that. Where are you going to store the boat? That's very important. So talking about horsepower, you see on my competition rig, I got a 250. And then on my aluminum boat, I have a 70 horse. And I'll be completely honest with you. I can fish all the same order out of my 70 horse as I can my 250 back there. So don't be misled to think that you've got to have the biggest and most horsepower available. I use a 250 in my competition boat because I think that's what helps me get the job done the best and most efficiency in the competition aspect. That's really important to me. Also, it's got to do with the market. I sell my boat every year. 
and a lot of people want a boat with the biggest engine on it so I get that so it's an easy sell for me every year it doesn't mean that you starting out have to have a 20 foot bass boat with a 250 on it buy what you can afford think about what you really can fish as much as possible and still afford it for you guys that are kids you know 11 12 years old a 12 foot john boat and a trolling motor that's something that'll get you out there and that's something that everybody that's willing to put in a little work can afford so think about that think about getting a 12 or 14 foot flat bottom john boat and a trolling motor you can probably get in that almost brand new for around a thousand bucks trolling motor battery and everything i think you can get a, a 12 foot john boat for like brand new six or seven hundred bucks so that's something that you can afford and that allows you to get out on the water and be able to become a better angler but there's so many affordable options out there uh for you guys you know i run um i didn't start out with the 250 and the 20 foot bass boat my, my first actual real bass boat was actually my dad's bass boat that i bought from him when i decided that tournament fishing was something that i really wanted to kind of pursue um and i think it was 2001 as soon as i got out of high school i bought his boat and um it was a 19 footer and i had a 150 horsepower on it and that's also a great boat you know anything if for you college guys out there if you can afford it you know something like a um a 18 foot 17 18 foot with 150 horsepower on it i think that's a great tool for you guys out there that are that are getting into college fishing look, looking to do that right out of high school that'll allow you to go just about anywhere you want to fish in the country and um, do whatever you need to do just with uh, 150 horsepower that's a good boat you could tow it with a mid-sized truck um, you always have to think about your tow vehicle when you're picking out a boat and how much you can afford you're going to get good gas mileage out of one, uh, 150 and uh, you know it's just a good boat to, to compete out of a lot of people are going to think about electronics you know how what electronics should i buy for the little johnny or what should i buy you, you know it's gonna be a subject a matter of opinion buy what you can afford when it comes to electronics if you can buy if you can afford the hds 12 like what i got here on my falcon you know go get that if that's what you can afford go get it uh on my little aluminum boat i do run one uh graph up here at front and this is a boat that i've kind of I've kind of added stuff on too as I've as I'll go. I got a HDS7 on the console, and that's strictly just for so for navigating. Sometimes I take this boat to places that I don't know, and it's just nice to be able to see little backwaters. I didn't start off with the Lorance 7 on that one. I wouldn't suggest you guys out there, if this is your first boat that you're buying, I wouldn't suggest a fixer upper. If you this is your first boat that you're gonna buy. I would buy one that is ready to go because you don't want to start off with a project. I didn't make a whole bunch of money when I started buying boats. I, I just, I never made a whole bunch of money. And I don't want you guys to believe the lie that fishing is something that's not accessible to you because I know most of you guys watching are probably just like me. Just normal folks, just normal people. You know, there's a lot of kids out there that, that probably started out at 16 17 with the with the nicest fanciest competition rig and that's okay too if you can afford that i don't want to see you guys bashing the guys that they just can't afford it because you wouldn't give it back if you could afford it so think about that you know start off small my suggestion would be to start off small um especially for the the high school anglers the college anglers just buy what you can afford and get out there and start fishing consider your tow vehicle uh, consider you know how much what you want to actually fish figure out what you want to fish are you going to try to fish bfls you're going to try to fish the college series uh are you just going to fish club tournaments or do you just want to go fishing period if you choose wisely keep it on fishing keep it fun and i promise you everybody can participate in fishing everybody can have a boat if you're just willing to sacrifice a little bit and buy within your means. <laughs>